So my name is Mordechai, I'm a tech lead at IronScales, and I'm going to give my talk about uh, real-time phishing attacks and uh, real-time data enrichment and real-time data pipelines for detecting phishing attacks. So what is phishing? Okay, so I can try to explain what's on the screen. Listeners, um, the idea here is that we have an uh, email and it's uh, being sent from no reply at lib libbeats.co.uk and the subject is Ayal, your email has exp your email password has expired. So please log in and um, change your change your password. Um, well, this this is a problem because uh, this isn't actually an email from Microsoft. This is an email from uh, no reply at libbeats. So this is uh, one example of an email that we're trying to detect. Uh, here's another one. Uh, do you have a free moment to talk? So this one's a little bit more complicated. The idea here is that it's not really a link that you're supposed to click on. It's a kind of generic message, and we're trying to um, also detect emails that don't have like a clearly defined thread. Uh, so how do we do this? Um, well, using big data. One of our advantages is that, or one of our advantages and challenges is that we have a lot of emails and a lot of data to go through. So at Iron Scales, we have around 1 million in protected mailboxes, 100 million inspections, we inspected emails per day. And if you calculate that in the average email size, we actually um, ingest petabytes of email emails per month. And so that works out to be many thousands of email inspections per second and many tens of thousands of predictions per second because we make many different predictions for a specific email. And also the ch this is a challenge because our systems are constantly growing. How many duplicates do you have? Duplicates? Like just the same email yeah, that's a good question. So one of the things that we do is try to cluster or identify if an email is similar to another. I don't have the exact numbers of what kind of email is duplicated, but we do do something called like we cluster. So example, for a specific company, if we see the same email multiple times to multiple users, we'll cluster them together. And if it's for a different company, create a new incident for that company. I had a phishing attempt and front of mine got the same with different names. So. Yeah, so it's a good point. So many of these attacks come from single server or um, using a specific template, or they may come from different uh, servers using the same template. So it's kind of uh, the challenge here. All right, so um, what I want to focus here is on email context. So when we're looking at an email, we have some type of metadata. We have, let's say, the IP address. Here in this example, it's 69420. We have, let's say, the domain, example.com, and the sender name, John Doe. Does that mean that the email is phishing? It's not enough data. Um, just an IP address, like a raw IP address, isn't enough to make a classification. So we tried to get the context of that IP address. So here we can see that this IP has been seen 10 times. Um, out of those 10 times, seven of the times it's already been marked as phishing, and so therefore, 70% of the attacks or the emails have been marked as phishing. And that's pretty suspicious. Any new email from that IP might, looks probably also phishing. Um, so this is the idea of IP reputation. Um, so basically we have like a pipeline that goes through and inspects every email that we receive in real time. Uh, there's three steps. One, extract features. Two, run a prediction three, save the results, and we can use those results to make new predictions in the future. So what does that look like for the scope of IP reputation? So here we have um, some raw data coming in. Uh, let's say the IP address 69420, once again. We have the features that we extract. Let's say um, the score is 0.9 because we've seen this email 10 times, marked nine as phishing. Um, and then we map that to a prediction using um, some kind of uh, tabular data machine learning algorithm. Um, so here in, the, in this example, we have 70% um, probability of phishing. 
So at the persistence layer, at the end of the prediction, we then um, save those, those counts to our IP reputation feature store. So let's say we would increment the counts so that there would be plus one phishing, plus one total. And then we can use that to classify further emails. Yeah, it's better. Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, so let me try to walk through this again. All right, so we have the raw data that's coming in. Um, so for example, the raw data here is the IP address, which is 69420, for example. So then we would extract the IP score for that IP address by querying our feature store. Um, let's imagine that the feature store returns some results and says that the IP score is 0.9, which means that we've seen this IP 10 times. And out of those 10 times, nine of them are marked as vision. That's good. All right. So then we would say, OK, well, let's map that to a prediction. So we send it to, we send it to like an inference. They say 70% probability of phishing based on these scores. We would, then, we would then save the model or save the predictions so that we can use it as an input for further emails. So for example, if we think that it's phishing, we can say, okay, well, this IP is now more suspicious in the future. Does that make sense? Okay. All right, so how do we do this in real time? So imagine for a second we have a feature store. So we have uh, basically a class with two methods, something like that, get reputation, which, um, like you give it a string and it returns some kind of float, uh, the reputation of that IP address, and then increment, which um, change, which adds like new counts to the to the table. So we have um, let's say phishing plus one, total plus one, and then we can use this uh, to make predictions. So we would then save that to let's say a Postgres table with four columns, uh, IP value which is the IP address, and then phishing count spam count, and total count. Um, or not, uh, there's a problem with this approach in the amount of data that we address. So if we're talking about 5,000 emails per second, maybe uh, inserting one at a time into a relational database is not the best approach. So we need to do it a little faster. So maybe we can use a batching strategy. So instead of for every email, we send it directly to the database, we put it into Redis, and then every one, every one minute we pull out the, the records from Redis and insert them into the table. But if you do the math, this is also problematic. We have, uh, let's say, 5,000 emails per second, 60 seconds, so we have 300,000 record changes for a single minute. And um, this is problematic even, even more because we have many different fields that we're trying to repute. For example, the sender name, uh, the domain, stuff like that. So this approach is also not good enough. Um, so we need something a little faster. Um, at IronScales, one of the uh, solutions that we use is Cassandra. So we take the worker, sends uh, the insert to a Cassandra, um, which is divided into multiple partitions, or in Cassandra, they're called vnodes. And then the idea is that once they're in Cassandra, they're split into multiple different servers, and so that there isn't a bottleneck on a specific um, area. So this is like the idea of the Cassandra, so it's much faster. So what does that mean for our inspection pipeline as a whole? Um, IP reputation is one part of our machine learning system, and we like to divide that into two categories. Uh, primary detectors, which will detect an email based on, there's no context involved, it's just using like templates or some basic fact about the email. Then we have generalizers, which use the predictions from the first model and try to extend them to other ones. This is, for example, classifying um, based on clustering. So is this email similar to another email that we also marked as phishing? Uh, the most important metric that we use is precision because we want all of our models to um, not detect any false positives. No, I mean, between two emails, like if you want to do some clustering, 
to okay, look yes, at so two metrics. You need to two emails. You need to see how far they're apart. Right. So there's many different ways that we could say that emails are far apart. One of them would be, let's say, based on the body. So let's say if there's textual similarity, um, and we use some normalization so that emails, like say, are similar, and then we would strip the like special characters and match them. For example, if there's uh, the name of the recipient in the email, then we would strip that and then try to match them. Um, this is actually might be considered a type of clustering because we're trying to identify the IP address, and if the IP address is common between two, e two emails, we can then match them and say that they're both phishing. The idea of the primary detectors is that um, they're very high de precision and there's low dependencies. For example, if we have a NLP model that's trying to detect a specific template, then we don't need the context or the reputation of some type of metadata in order to make this classification. Um, another example would be, let's say, image classification. If we have a link, the link goes to a landing page, which is a fake, la fake login for some, let's say, a fake uh, Microsoft login page. Then we can know that without understanding the reputation of the sender. Um, but there's some disadvantages with this approach because these models are slow to retrain. They can't respond in real time to new types of templates or attacks. And they have low recall because it's not possible for these types of models to know every single template in existence, and new templates are being created all the time. So that's where generalizers work in. The idea is that we can increase the recall and respond to new types of uh, attacks in real time by, instead of using the template, we use like the metadata and associate emails with each other based on some kind of similarity. For example, IP reputation. If it's uh, sent from the same IP, then it's also probably phishing. But the, the con is that it depends on the existing detectors, um, like the template model, in order to make the first prediction. The other thing is that it's difficult to calibrate because um, the email, right, so we have some score. Let's say the email is detected 50% from this IP. Does that mean that there's an 80% chance of it being phishing, 90% chance? So that's a little difficult to determine. And it might change based on improvements upstream and other classifiers. Um, so yeah, that's kind of uh, the idea. Um, so some of the stuff we discussed, there's many types of phishing. Uh, we use contextual data to enrich, um, enrich our feature set. And we can build real-time pipelines from the context and scale them, and then build like stack multiple models and pipelines to build a robust system. Yes. All right. And um, of course, we are hiring. So if you are a data engineer, a uh, backend, or an ML engineer, or an ML product manager, or just a smart person, some useful skills, we would love to have you and build awesome software together. Privacy issues? Because in what you described, right, you mean right. that you can do analy analysis, analyzing the text. Right. And in many cases, the privacy pre prevent you doing. OK, yeah, so that's a good question. So one of the things that we do is, um, obviously, we're stuck to comply, and, and you know we have all the licenses. One of the things we do is we tokenize all of the emails, and then we use like a hash tokenizer. So instead of um, the word manager, it would be like, um, some kind of uh, number, and then we can analyze it using that way. Uh, yeah. uh, any other questions? Yeah. yeah. So, what could we like in the mix? Make sure the approaches between you know more static matching of IPs or domains and so, or hosts or so on versus you know content based or sub the NLP and the images. Like, how much can you say roughly? You know, is it like 70 30, 10 90? That's a good question. Um, I can say that right now, um, let's say primary detectors make up, well, first of all, there's some overlap. So many of our machine learning models will detect um, the same email, and some of them won't detect it, or only one will detect it. But we could split it, let's say, 50-50 or something like that between generalizers and the primary detectors, roughly. And can you say how much like your models I mean, a lot of what you should is basically given that an email, the main IP is like sending out phishing, then, you know, identify it rapidly and well. To what degree do the models work well for identifying, you know, 
a phishing email more for the content bit. But if this is a phishing email, even if someone is sending out a different, or one guy was writing a different template and sending it out from a different IP for every different person, how well would the models work for that? You know, a cold, more of a cold start problem, you could say. Yeah, so first of all, we have records of all of the templates, or many templates that are common to phishing. Um, but for example, sometimes we have targeted attacks where they have a specially crafted email that they, that they send to a specific person, um, let's say a VIP at a company. Um, one of the things that we see, for example, is that they'll send uh, like a very generic request, like, hey, um, I need to chat, can you, can you send me your phone number or something like that? Um, and then we have like some type of reputation based um, system. So we can say, okay, well, this sender is being very, very, um, this sender is trying to be very close to the, the sender, but there's no prior history. So we can try to analyze it based on um, reputation like that. Have you tried any uh, tool of real time like Kafka or Bystar screening like, for, for the feature store? Okay. Yeah, so um, our messaging queues are right now RabbitMQ, but we're switching over to Kafka. Um, in terms of real-time data stores, mainly we use Cassandra for, um, for persistence and stuff like that. Uh, and uh, what is the Okay. Did you, did you try to detect some kind of typos and say that I want Chrome to receive them and then maybe then focus your, your energy more on them? Yeah. Actually, yes. So we have something called um, the VIP production. So we have a special tag that we assign to people with titles like CEO, CFO, stuff like that. And then we have a much lower confident, much lower threshold for escalating those types of attacks. Um, Higher, higher false positives, but the idea is that these are higher impact, so we'll be more careful there. When scaling, how do you know you're being resourceful enough? Like when do you say it's enough optimizing? Like... So that's a good question. Basically, we're in growth mode, so you know it's just like turn on another server. We don't have time to optimize. Um, but one of the big uh, um, initiatives right now is moving to Kubernetes and setting up auto scaling. So that's going to reduce our um, compute. Uh, any other questions? Uh, you said that the clustering is like high recall, low precision. Isn't it the other way around? I mean, template matching is high precision, low recall. No? I'm sorry, can you repeat that? You said that the approach that you used was instead of the normal NLP model was basically clustering the template matching. But, and you said that that's high precision, low. Uh, high recall, low precision, but isn't that approach high precision, low recall? You're checking if it's similar to something to an existing template. So it works well for known positives, but not for novel positives. Yeah, so um, template matching uh, is high precision, low recall. No, the, set, the one after that. Okay. Yeah, so like, for example, here we're looking at a specific template and we know that, okay, the content of this template is phishing. And so if we detect that this template is in the email, then it's also phishing. But here, if we look at, for example, an IP-based feature, then it doesn't necessarily mean the email is phishing. Let me give you an example. Suppose that the IP address is a Google server. The IP address is Google server, sending out to many different, you know, millions of people. Some of those emails are phishing, uh, but the majority are not. So there could be some confusion there. All right, well, thanks guys. <laughs>